Good morning. Welcome on this bright and beautiful morning, certainly different than yesterday morning, although it sounds like it'll end a bit like yesterday, it started at least with some precipitation. It is the fifth Sunday in Lent. This will be the last kind of regular Lenten Sunday service. Next week is Palm Sunday, and then we're into Holy Week, so uh, get ready for something different after today. Um, if you have not already done so, uh, while I would uh, certainly invite you to maybe whet your appetite here, I'll remind you that the Legion is having their uh, breakfast this morning, uh, and we have a number of our members who are part of that community, I invite you to support them uh, in that way. Uh, your pastor is a happy camper, although I was telling Jesse that it, it, I was going to be happy either way. Carolina made it to the finals uh, uh, for the NCAA men. Uh, women, I think Final Four is today. There it looked like it's like all the ones made it. Am, did I see that right? They were a little more predictable, I guess, in their, in their endings. Today, uh, we step out of the Gospel of Luke, step into the Gospel of John, and it is a story that will be familiar. We'll hear it again in a little over a week of Jesus and the disciples gathered around a table and feet being attended to, but this time it's Mary with ointment and her hair. And so we will be talking about fragrance, scents, smells, and what that means for us and what that might mean for our lives as we follow Jesus. It is good that we are gathered together. I invite us to stand for the confession and forgiveness. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws close to us in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy, and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined, mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. And we sing.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Creator God, you prepare a new way in the wilderness, and your grace waters our desert. Open our hearts to be transformed by the new thing you are doing, that our lives may proclaim the extravagance of your love given to all through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. The first reading comes from Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. The prophet declares that long ago, God performed mighty deeds and delivered Israel from Egyptian bondage through the waters of the sea. Now, God is about to do a new thing, bringing the exiles out of Babylon and through the wilderness in a new exodus. Thus saith the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you, per do you not perceive it? I will make way in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The psalm is uh, Psalm 126. We will read that responsively. When the Lord restores the fortunes of Zion, they were we like those who dream. When there was our mouth filled with laughter and her tongue with shouts of joy, then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheets. The second reading is, comes from Philippians chapter 3. Writing to Christians in uh, Philippi, Paul admits that his heritage and reputation could give him more reason than most people to place confidence in his spiritual pedigree. But the overwhelming grace of God in Jesus calls Paul to a new set of values. Paul writes, If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, wherever gains I had, these I have come to regard as a loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as a loss because of the surprising value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, that, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I might gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached, reached this goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this is one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining toward what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Jesus Christ Jesus. 
Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite us to stand as we sing our greeting to the gospel. Gospel according to John, the twelfth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Scents are powerful, aren't they? I can remember the scent my mother wore when she got dressed up for a special date. A scent I knew meant mom and dad were going out to a party, flowery, full. Have you had a moment where a scent took you back to another time or place. It's what sometimes is called a body sense memory. Things locked away in our memory that are opened by a sight or a sound or a taste or a smell of hot asphalt right after a summer rain, of that special meal that your grandma used to make. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. I remember coming into First Lutheran Church when I served there very early on Easter morning to get things ready for the youth breakfast, and I would approach the sanctuary through the narthex. If you've ever been there, it's a large space, and so I'd be walking towards the sanctuary through the narthex, and when I was about 10 or 15 feet from the open doors to the sanctuary, that's when the fragrance of the lilies would hit me like a wall, flowery, cloying, surrounding me with its fragrance and unfortunately locking my sinuses right up. But that was the smell, the scent of Easter. The house was filled with the fragrance of the opened jar of ointment of nard, a pound poured out on Jesus' feet, wiped from them by Mary's hair. What did the perfume smell like? I got asked this by a colleague last week, and I found no good answer except earthy, woody, spicy, musty. Some of which makes sense because nard is made from a root that is found in the mountains of Nepal. But if nard was regularly used to anoint bodies for burial, I also wonder if it didn't smell like death to those present. 
if their body sense memory didn't go to that place because that's what the scent was associated with, especially since some of those present had recent experience with such. We are in the house of Lazarus, recently raised from the dead by Jesus. See the 11th chapter of John, whose body his sister Mary, along with her sibling Martha, would have anointed for burial, maybe with ointment from this same jar. Jesus, Lazarus, the disciples, Mary, and Martha have just shared a meal together. And as the eating has ended, Mary approaches the feet of Jesus. Remember this story when we gather again on Monday, Thursday, around another shared table of Jesus and his disciples when he will approach them and their feet. Mary takes a pound an extravagant amount. One might even say, prodigal? Sound familiar? She takes a pound of this ointment of nard, something worth almost a year's wages, an extravagant cost. One might almost say, prodigal. And she anoints Jesus' feet. And then she uses her hair to wipe the oil from them. The language used is the exact same as used for the action of Jesus wiping the feet of his disciples during Holy Week. And these two incidents are the only time that word is used in Scripture. John deliberately connects these two moments. Why does Mary anoint Jesus' feet? If the anointing is to declare him king or even God's chosen one, she would have anointed his head. That's how those things were done. Not his feet. Those dirty, unclean, stinky means of locomotion that only the humblest of servants would touch. Feet. Like those of the disciples that Jesus will kneel and wash on that Monday, Thursday at the final meal with them, like the humblest of servants, the humblest of acts. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. What's going on here? In this intimate setting around a shared meal with those who he loved around him, we see in Mary's action an example of the reciprocal love Jesus will call his disciples to show to everyone at the Last Supper. Come back on Monday, Thursday with this story ringing in your ears. It's a love that doesn't count the cost like Judas did. That is extravagant prodigal even in loving God because that is how God loves us. Jesus in the Gospel of John says he has come that they may have life and have it abundantly. The prologue of John says that in the Word made flesh, that is Jesus, we receive grace upon grace. Our cup overflows with God's prodigal love and mercy, and we respond in kind to God. Sometimes there is value in giving God our best. After all, the Gospel of John reminds us that where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. If we send our best to God, give off the top of our resources, ourselves, our talents, our time, our hearts will follow. Mike Reinhardt asks in one of our chapters from his book that we are reading this Lent, asks us to assess how we spend our time. One of the things we value most 
in our society because that will tell you where your heart is, what's really important to you. Are we extravagant with our resources and our love of God? Or do we react like Judas? It's too much. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. An extravagant, prodigal, visible, costly outpouring of love for the Lord who means everything to Mary, who called her brother back from death. Mary, who sat at those very feet she now anoints to listen to Jesus, much to the annoyance of her sister Martha, who shows in her action of love to Jesus the same kind of love Jesus will in another week or so call his followers to have for one another so that the whole world might know that they are his disciples. A love that comes from the abundance of grace, love, and mercy that we have experienced in our lives with God. A love that believes always that there is enough and more than enough for all. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. It is the smell of God's extravagant love for the world bearing fruit, blossoming in this woman who has received the outpouring of God's word in Jesus, experienced firsthand the power that he has to bring the dead to life, and who in anointing Jesus knows that not even death can defeat the will of God that he embodies. I wonder if from that day forward, Mary carried that scent with her. Like how wood smoke lingers in your clothes, or when you walk in a room and you know someone has been there by their fragrance that lingers. I wonder if just by entering a place, by living out who she is, as a follower of Jesus, she fills where she is with the fragrance of God's abundant love for the world. Mary doesn't know what the next few weeks will bring, but she is confident that in Jesus, God is doing a new thing, something better than what came before. A new thing that is worth prodigal gifts on our part, a new thing that will mean life from death. Oh, that we would be like Mary and not like Judas. That we would trust in the abundance of God enough to show extravagant love for his son. That we would trust the abundance of God enough to show this extravagant love to one another to break open the jar of our lives and pour ourselves out extravagantly. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. What would it be like for us to carry the smell of God's extravagant love into the world? That the scent of that love would go with us from this place into the rest of our lives. A wonderful fragrance of new life and hope that wafts into the workplaces and schools and homes that we enter that would linger there long after we leave. What would it be like? for us as a congregation to fill this city of Ely with the fragrance of that perfume of God's extravagant love in the world, such that when people entered this town, they would walk into a wall of fragrance and know something wonderful is happening here. Oh, Mary, inspire us with your boldness 
and faithfulness. O Holy Spirit, come to us through your word. Fill us with the perfume of God's extravagant love and grace. O Lord Jesus, do in us a new thing that we might go into the world you so love enough to pour out your very life on the cross that we might be your hands and feet, bringing, transforming grace upon grace to all whom we meet, filling the house of this world with your fragrance of love. Let it be so. Amen. I invite us to stand as we sing our hymn of the day. Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the blessed. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Do a new thing in your church. Free us from ideas and ministries that no longer serve the gospel. Inspire leadership and members alike with your Holy Spirit to explore and adopt new ways to proclaim the good news. Give us courage in the face of change. Merciful God. Do a new thing for your creation. Open our eyes to the ways we abuse our stewardship of creation. Change our thinking, 
so that we might hear the difficult and hopeful news of those who study this amazing world you have made. Inspire us to steward this gift that it might provide for your people for generations to come. Merciful God, do a new thing in your world. Break barriers that prevent political enemies from working together for the well-being of all. Make a way for peace and collaboration among the nations. We pray especially for peace in Ukraine, Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Yemen, Libya, and Myanmar. Merciful God. Do a new thing for those who suffer. Reveal a path for any who are unemployed or underemployed, for those experiencing homelessness, for all who struggle with money. Comfort those who grieve and restore those who are in need of healing. Especially we pray for Amy, April, David, Del, Sally, John, Anne, Jane, Abby, Deb, Cheryl, Shayla, Cooper, Stephanie, Lee, Mark, Marius, Pearl, Dan, Hunter, Tammy, Catherine, Diane, Donna, Diane, Irene, Brenna, Tom, Rick, Rachel, Morris, Marv, Lenora, Lillian, Judd, and all those whom we name now aloud are in the silence of our hearts. Merciful God, do a new thing within us. Give us courage to enter into encounters that broaden our understanding of the human experience. Grant us hearts and minds open to changing our thinking. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit to better proclaim your love for the world in all that we say and do. Merciful God, accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need. For the sake of Jesus Christ, amen. The peace of Christ be with you, always. Let us share that peace with one another. Peace always works. And then I will invite you to be seated. We give thanks to God for those who are offering of themselves this morning. Joyce for reading, Joyce and Jesse for hosting this morning. Karen on the AV, I think Butch and Annette I saw going back uh, to host uh, between services. Many thanks to them for their offering of themselves this morning. There are other opportunities to offer of ourselves uh, coming up in terms of our worship together, particularly for Holy Week. Uh, we are in need of uh, Readers for Monday Thursday, Good Friday, we've got taken care of. And actually, this coming Sunday, we've got taken care of. But hosts, certainly, so that folks kind of know how to move in and through our worship. Also for Easter Sunday morning. So if you uh, might be so inspired at one of those services to serve as a host, as a reader, or to learn how to run the AV, uh, you can sign up uh, on one of the sheets on the Welcome Center desk. You can indicate that also online and sign up online if you are interested. Don't worry, we'll provide you training if you uh, so desire. Many thanks as well to all who support the mission and ministry of St. John with their generous uh, offering of their resources. If you'd like to do that today, you can do so in the offering plate as you go out the center doors. You can always do so online through our website, stjohnelie.org. There's an online giving button there. And now, as we have gathered together around a table, an offering of Christ's own body and blood, I invite you to receive this offering of music.
Let us pray. Extravagant God, You have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at Your feast where You offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn God, our living water and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin, that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the joy, forever and ever. Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Come to the table of mercy and grace. Tell you what, I think we're the right size to do this by one big table. So, what I'm going to invite you to do is everybody to come forward and kind of fill in along the steps on the side that you are seated on, and then I'll just come down the line and bring the bread and then down the line and bring the wine and the juice. So come on forward. It's time to eat.
Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As I said, this is the last of this kind of Lenten Sunday service. We will have our last midweek Lenten service this coming Wednesday, 7 o'clock p.m. Soup supper is at 6. I think most everything was filled in except maybe for sandwiches. Uh, So you want to take a look if you're uh, interested and willing uh, to bring something. Otherwise, I invite you to come. We'll see what prayer practice or experience we will have this week. Last week, I think, was kind of fun. We got up and moved around a little bit. Palm Sunday is next Sunday, 8 and 10.30, a reminder that uh, we'll have the procession of the palms to begin with, so you can drop your stuff in here, but we will actually assemble out in the narthex area and actually process in. We'll also be sharing a reading of the Passion Narrative from Luke, uh, so it will be a different kind of service. We do, as I said, need help for our Holy Week services, uh, Maundy Thursday, 7 o'clock p.m., our Good Friday at 7, uh, and then also Easter services. It's coming, and that right soon, and soon we'll be able to set free that which is buried in this box behind me. Um, there, a uh, reminder that there are announcements on the back of the little half sheet uh, that kind of fills you in on the highlights from the e-news if you don't get that. Also, if the e-news is something that uh, you uh, have not been receiving or can't get, um, we're trying to put out kind of a monthly uh, news sheet for those who don't have access to electronic means. Uh, we've got some extra copies available uh, on uh, the desk as you go out the center doors. Uh, They kind of just give some broad highlights of things that we know are going to be happening in the coming month. We have activities for all generations uh, uh, related to Palm Sunday next week, so I invite you to go participate in that, share some fellowship together, and then we will see you again either Wednesday or Sunday. And now I invite you to receive this blessing. Your children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness, strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. And we sing. <laughs>